So their stock market in one year doubled. Now it's come down 40% or 50%, but it's still 50% higher than what it should be. And so it could come down another 20%. So unfortunately, that speculation... Now, China is new to economic, uh, you know, global economics. They were closed economy, command economy, and so they're going to make mistakes. But let's look at it. The rest of the world, I'm going to talk about two elements. The rest of the world, the financial system is in pretty healthy condition. If you look at the U.S., um, the U.S. just last week generated very strong economic growth. The U.S. economic growth is really strong. But, but isn't it the nature? I think we've talked about nature and culture. If we just look at what's going on in Greece at the moment, uh, of people, if, if opportunity, temptation is put in front of them and borrowing is available, when the math suggests it shouldn't be, um, isn't it necessary for states to regulate to make sure this happens? Look, Stephen King, the HSBC uh, economist, warned back in May of this year, the world, he said, is sailing across the ocean without any lifeboats to use in the case of emergency. Do you agree with his uh, uh, statement and what do you think is the significance of it? I think economists <coughs> tend to put headline notes out so that they get quoted. And um, yes, there may be some val uh, validity to some of the points, but it's not as extreme as that. I think, um, you know, global economy is growing. It's growing at, three, uh, in fact, growing at 3.5%. Just not from, from a 50-year perspective, it's not bad growth. A lot of that growth is coming from productivity. It, it's good growth. You know, those countries have got, that are encouraging bad growth, they are being penalized at the moment. But there's some really good fundamentals. Yes, quantitative easing is going away, which we think is good. Okay? Interest rates will rise because they have to, because you have to balance the savers and uh, uh, um, investors and borrowers. Some of the bad companies may fold, but remember, that may actually be good because it means the good companies will pick up that volume, they will employ, they will grow. And you know, the good companies are ethical. They invest through the cycle. They are, you know, they're very focused on the green. It's good for the economy. The, you, so just take it. You're keeping smokestack with lots of pollution, bad business practices, uncompetitive. You're keeping that alive with quantitative easing and bad economic practice and the efficient, effective, modern, energy uh, efficient green companies you su you're suppressing. And I'm arguing as those older guys go out, which they should go, the better, more efficient, you know, and they better policies towards the environment, towards women, towards just every, you know, they're more so socially responsible. So by taking away this abnormality of quantitative easing, um, there may be a little bit of pain. You know, we can't only just have gain, sometimes a little bit of pain, there may be a bit of pain in the process, but it will lead to a healthier, more efficient, more effective, happier economy, happier society, you know, and then you won't have the greases happening because the greases only happen Greece is that old smokestack, inefficient, ineffective, go to the beach and let other people work and we will eat and spend on borrowed money. Do you need that? We don't need it. Everybody's got to have a certain level of work. Everybody's got to have a certain level of uh, social togetherness and family time. And so why should one country or one people, now they're feeling the pain, they will start working soon. And life is not only about the beach, it's about balance. So we very well, much... Well, your definition of uh, the lifestyle of, of the Greek as, as, as beach lovers and not workers, I, I, I think there will be some who may challenge you on that. But uh, on that note of uh, positivity, that vision that you have uh, described so eloquently, uh, Adam uh, Ismail Ibrahim, uh, Chief Executive of Oasis Crescent, thank you very much once again for joining us on... Islam Channel. Carl, it's always a great pleasure. You know, um, I've been doing this for more than 25 years. I started my career with the, <clears throat> with the introduction of regulation. 
the Financial Service Act of 1986 in the UK. I was part of the team that implemented that. Then, in 1980, then we had exuberance, we had the effect of 1987, Black Monday. All of these things have created the foundation, the DNA of Oasis. And remember, we're here to build the long-term wealth. We're here to be prudent. We're here to add value. And we're here to educate so that we're here to actually get more people to fall not say the wealthy get wealthier, but say we're part of the process of getting wealthier. And if you have a wealthier society, if you have a society cr who is socially responsible, looking after the less uh, well off, and you raise everybody's standards of living, um, it's a much happier place. And if you pay your zakah on your um, investments, so the better we do, the, uh, we, the more, um, People are lifted out of poverty, and the more zakah is paid, the greater balance. Um, we think Islamic finance and what Oasis is doing is absolutely fantastic. And inshallah, um, hopefully we can continue working in this area, working to deliver on that mandate, because the more prosperous society we have, the, the much nicer it is, and the more time we can actually enjoy life. Thank you so much for joining us on Islam Channel. It's a great pleasure. Thanks a lot, Carl. Thank you.